open like a window. No more ego. Look at the videos. Because they're like so high on it. And everybody on the East Coast calls me Don. I'm like, what is Don? Like, my mom thought I was uh, on Long Island, but I was at Howard Homecoming. Ready? Turn it up. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonia on Air. I'm your host, Sonia Hudson Payne. And how do I start off each and every single episode? You guessed it. I have another great show for you. I'm excited about this show. I really am. I'm excited about every Sonia on Air episode because I get a chance to talk to celebrities that I've admired for so many years. And for me, it's not about, you know, the latest gossip. I really want to unpack their pivotal moments and their milestones. So I'll tell you about today's guest really soon. But I need you to do a few quick favors. I need you to not only listen to this episode, but go back and listen to other Sign You On Air episodes. Then after you listen to it, I need you to leave a comment. I need you to like the episode and I need you to share it with your family, friends, frenemies, enemies, cousins, aunties, twice removed, <laughs> all of them, the hard of hearing, all of them. I'll put the little sign language up for them too, okay? A new demographic, a new audience. Just share it with everyone. And if you're watching this on YouTube, not only subscribe, but make sure that you hit the notification bell. That way, every time I upload an all new Sonya On Air celebrity interview, you'll be the first ones to know. You'll be the first ones to know. Who doesn't want to be the first ones to say, I heard that conversation. Let me share it with everyone else so they can, you know, get up with the news and the celebrity interviews as well. So make sure that you hit the notification bell. Also, coming up really soon, I'm going to return back to offering digital billboard space. So if you are a brand and you want to market and promote your wonderful brands, hit me up. Send me an email at Sonya at SonyaOnAir.net. We just got two digital billboards in Times Square here in New York City. And I also have billboards available in every state across the United States. So although I am based in New York, I can work with you no matter what state you're in in order to leverage your brand and bring more public awareness. So make sure that you contact me for a digital billboard space. That's if you want it and if you're serious. Also, thank you to the winners of my annual beer, bourbon, and barbecue contest. We had a ball. We had a time last night. <laughs> we had a time last night. So I'm going to be showing you some footage of this event as well because this is an annual event. Let me tell you the first time I went to this event. This is how nice this event is. I went during a blizzard in New York City, got in an Uber and the Uber got stuck in the snow. And I'm just sitting in the back seat like he better push a little bit harder because I got to get my bourbon. I got to get my bourbon. I don't drink beer. Though. I got to get my bourbon. So just unlimited bourbon, unlimited beer, unlimited food, unlimited fun, unlimited music. Unlimited networking, if that's what you want to do, you know, you don't just want to just go for play. You also want to just make sure that you're meeting like minded individuals. So once again, just shout out to the winners and shout out to everyone who was in attendance and make sure that you hit up the annual beer, bourbon and barbecue fest in Brooklyn, New York every single year. What else do we have? Should I tell you about today's today's guest? Should I tell you about today's guest or should I just prolong this a little bit more? OK, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I can't keep a secret at all. Today's guest. I love it when you do it right there. You know who that is? Chingy, the rapper from the 2000s. Let me tell you about the 2000s. The, two, the 2000s and the 90s. Historical music moments. They really just kind of set a precedence for how music should be created I don't know what's going on in 2023 and I don't want to sound like, you know, the auntie or the grandma of the, the, the barbecue, but the music has definitely changed. You know, when an artist is successful, when you say, okay, name an artist from the 2000s or name a popular song of the 2000s that if you are at a barbecue or in a club, I ain't in the club no more, unless I'm invited VIP, name a popular song in the 2000s that if it comes on, it has you up and dancing 
and you cannot tell me that Chingy's right there doesn't do it for am i saying it right i love it when you do it right there <laughs> so he's going to be joining us i reached out to his management team a few years ago and if you notice on every sign you on air celebrity interview i tell you persistence and hard work is so key so even though i pitch out to these major television film networks celebrities themselves celebrity publicists branding managers brand strategists sometimes it is a soft no and i'm like it's okay it's okay <laughs> it's okay because i'm going to keep following up and sure enough it landed so whenever you hear the word no don't take it as a deterrent just take it as fuel for motivation to say okay how can i just reimagine the approach so that it lands so that i can get the yes once you do that you just remain persistent and dedicated to that conversation just to seeing the solution that you want i guarantee you I guarantee you that you will see the dial move. So Chingy is going to be joining us in just a few short moments. Let me see. What else do I have? Don't forget to subscribe. You know, there's one thing that I always forget during the show. Like I'm always telling you in the beginning. I'm always telling you in the end of the show. I need to start like throughout the show reminding you all to subscribe because the celebrities come on and we're having great conversations and you all just get engrossed and you forget. You forget. You forget. Also, one other thing that I want to talk about, how many of you have joined Instagram's new platform called Thread? It's supposed to be similar to Twitter. Elon Musk, child, I bet he is going crazy because he made too many changes to Twitter and people didn't like Twitter. Like I had to make Twitter my side piece. I said, you can't get all my time, honey. You can't get, well, I'm going to probably touch you in the morning and walk away for 50 days. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see if thread becomes my other side piece sitting on the bench just waiting for me to say all right come on over let me let me tag you in for the next five minutes or for the next five hours i don't know so thread is so new if you have joined thread how do you like it leave a comment in the comment section so that we can talk so i can just you know figure out like what the rest of the world is doing but when i tell you it's just nothing but another distraction how many of you let's say you pick up social media by the way follow me on social media too i'm on instagram at sonya underscore on air i'm on facebook sonya on air celebrity interviews i'm now on thread Sonya underscore on air i'm on linkedin too but that's a little bit different conversation it's a little stuffy it's a little stuff here, <laughs> you know? So, but one thing that I'm just like, it's just too, too much. How many of you get on a social media platform, let's say for Instagram, and you're just like, I'm just going to be on it for three seconds. Five, I just want to see, just want to see. And next thing you know, you just open your eyes and you just join reality. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's an hour or it's a two hours i was about to say four if you on social media for four hours and you got a a, a job something wrong something is what i do know about these jobs they are hiring so many qualified people let me tell you how qualified i go into somebody's office today and they turned it into a hair braiding studio i said what in the urban dictionary in the black twitter is going on in the world of professionalism professionalism has changed so so much and once again i don't want to be the auntie or the grandma at the barbecue you know just talking about give me my walker and my, i don't i don't want to do that i don't want to do that but this this generation this generation they're really changing the dynamics of so many spaces it is becoming a dynamic of irresponsibility. The structures that once existed, the lines are becoming blurred. I've seen people show up to work in a crop top and booty shorts. I've seen people at work, let's say, um, blasting inappropriate songs. What, what's that that new rapper? Uh, what's it? Silky Red? Dirty Red? Well, I don't know her name, Dirty. Excuse me, you, you, somebody read. 
<laughs> Talk about the booty hole. <laughs> so anyway, someone's at work blasting that song. Just totally inappropriate. And how dare you? How dare you say anything to them? They're looking at you like you better subscribe to this uh, urban channel. You better subscribe to this black Twitter. I don't get it. So just another platform. I digress. As you can see, I digress. But just another platform that is going to distract me and, you know, just make me lose focus for a few minutes because I'm just scrolling through, just trying to see what the people in them are saying. You know, that's all. I just want some white noise because life is hard. It's hard out here for a pimp. So I just need some, some shenanigans to just say, you know what, well, my life ain't that bad. It ain't that bad at all. There's so much tomfoolery on social media. Just take your pick. Take your pick at 1 p.m. The shenanigans will change by 1.15. It changes again by 3 o'clock. By the time you lay down at night to go to sleep, you've watched about 80 movies, 50 infomercials, uh, 50 11 fights, uh 30 11 rips it's just too much it is too much so please i'm talking to the universe now please universe do not allow anyone else to create another social media platform we're done we've had enough and we don't want to be distracted and i don't want to distract you at all anymore either so we're going to take a few commercial breaks and I'll be right back with Chingy. I like it when you do it right there. I'll be right back with Sonia on air. Stay tuned. Smooches. This, this is Sonia on air. air. Do you work out on the regular? Fuel your cart goals with Instacart, the go-to service for quick delivery straight to your home. Use the special Sign Your Air link below. This, this is Sign Your On Air. Are you, Are you ready? ready? Let's, Let's go. go. You got it. Yes. You're good. It's good. Okay. How, how are you, Chingy? How you doing? Yes, ma'am. I'm great. I can't complain at all. I'm, I'm breathing. I'm living. Everything is good. Everything is good. Amen <laughs> to that. Just do me a favor. Don't call me ma'am, okay? <laughs> oh, got, it's a habit. It's a habit. Just out of respect for women, period. But I, I feel you. I, I my, auntie, my auntie tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it all the time. Like my part of my family, they're from the South. So uh -huh. it's always yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. They get on me about not saying it. I'm like, listen, I'm from New York. We don't say things, but I, yeah. get it. I, get yeah. it. I definitely appreciate the respect. Yep, got you. I, I got you. So it's all good. So let's just jump right into it. So I don't know if you know, but I've been mm -hmm. trying to get you on my show, Sonia On Air, for the last couple of years because I didn't know that. I know, but persistence and hard work definitely pays off. And we're going to tap into that a little bit um, later. But I measure you as a successful artist. And I'm going to tell you why. But mm -hmm. first, before I tell you why, I want to ask you, how do you measure your success as an artist? How do I measure my success as an artist? Um, you know, I've been, I've been doing this since a kid, um, before the fame, before the attention, before the hit records and everything. And I just measure my success through hard work mm. and, and dedication and being very passionate and compassionate about what I do. And so I would just, dedication is a, is a measure for me. I've been very dedicated throughout all these years with um, doing my music. 
Got it. Well, let me tell you how I'm measuring your success. And I know that other people who are fans of you, they measure your success the same way. When you talk about what's your favorite song or artist from the early 2000s and mm -hmm. your music comes up. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're at a barbecue or at a party and right third comes <laughs> on and that's yeah. how you up and dance. That's how you know that an artist is successful because those songs yeah. came out in the early 2000s yeah. and we're 20 in years ago. Exactly. So and that's how I'm measuring your success. I appreciate that. Um, and it's a, uh, it's, it's like, it's like, um, an old antique, an old classic antique, you know, that, that could be still around that people still love and appreciate. Those records are definitely classic and like old antiques and they stand the test of time. Like right there, holiday in one color where a lot of those records I came out with still trend to this day. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's just timeless music. It's good music, feel good music. People just like to dance to. Brings them back to a place in their life, whether they was in college or whatever they was doing, and it just brings some memories back to what they was going through at that time. And it always sticks with them because I get a lot of people to tell me my 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 album or my songs was a theme music to their life. Like even with pulling me back, I get a lot of um people to tell me it helped them with their marriage, helped them with their relationship. Mm. And so when it comes to making music, I think that's what you want to do with music. Yeah. You want it to be therapy. Yeah. And so when people tell me that I'm just I'm just kinda honored to be to be doing what I do because yeah. sound is creation. It is. It is. And your music is so multi generational to the point where I have a twenty eight year old daughter and mm -hmm. I introduced her to your music. And when I mm -hmm. put on right there, I was telling her, let me tell you the chicken head dance we used to do. When that came out, when that came out, she was eight. Yes. When those when those records came out, she was eight. And, um, yeah. And yeah. So no, that's it. cool. She didn't yeah. No, totally. Yeah. <laughs> so now being able to reshare the music with her years later to give her a different understanding from my perspective, she mm -hmm. enjoys and appreciates it a little bit more. You know, she's yeah. like, "Mom, she had to step out, but she is so excited for this conversation. She wants to hear all about it." So thank you for making multi generational music. But I yes. want to ask you about the early beginnings because a lot of people they know the glory but they don't know the story so your name gotcha. is howard earl bailey jr how did howard earl bailey jr yeah i'm giving your whole <laughs> government name uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. how did howard earl bailey jr create and give birth to chingy how did howard earl bailey jr create and give birth to chingy yeah yeah um you know what? Actually, Chingy was a name that me and friends and family of mine said for like, you know how we'll be, we'll say something like, oh yeah, they balling or they wealthy or they get money or they something that has to do with material gain or financial gain. He used to say, oh damn, they Chingy. Mm. So so we just, we just kind of threw a Y onto Chingy. Oh. And yeah, we, 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 you know, I come from I come from the humble beginnings where we always tried to be different. We always tried to have our own thing. And so I remember vividly um, my cousin, who's like a big brother to me, um, Jamal, he used to always say that. And it, we all just started saying it. And I was like, damn, that's a catchy name. Like, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to make that my stage name. You know what I'm saying? And so it just sounded really cool. And and that's how that's literally how it came about. Wow. I'm glad you cleared that up because for so many years I was like last week old when I found out like why you named yourself Chingy. All these years I thought your name was Chingy because you had chinky eyes. Chinky eyes. A lot of people think that too. A lot of, a lot of people thought that. A lot of people. I had I had people when I went to Japan, a lot of them thought I was um mixed with Japanese and, yeah. and a lot of stuff because of my eyes. But I, I am, I do have um Indian in me. And so yeah, that, that could that could be uh, one of them reasons as well. Yeah, we all thought that for so many years and it is so racially inappropriate. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. right? if that were true, like, we would probably all be canceled in today's space. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm glad you did that. But you know, just having your birth name, Howard Earl Bailey Jr. and then the evolution of Chingy, once you got into the record industry, which is very, very treacherous did you yeah find, yeah did you find that your alter ego now took over who howard bailey jr originally was and you were leading more with chingy 
actually, if anybody knows me, did my alter ego take over? No, it never did. Never did. Not me. I'm. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um. I make the money. I don't let the money make me. You know what I mean. And um. I never. I've never carried the ego. I've never thought I was more than anybody else. I thought I was better than anybody else. This is. I love it when you love it. It's not work. But it was always, it was always just my occupation and what I love to do. And so I just played my part and just did that. End of the day, when I got off stage, I was just me. I still was just, I was just me through it all. Still just me through it all. And so I never allowed um, the chinginess to override who I was on the inside. I got it. You make it sound so easy and seamless, but in the music industry, that's not easy yeah. at all because it is such a competitive type of sport. So where does all of that come from? Because you weren't just like born with it. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? Like, like once again, if you know, like, I, if you know me growing up, I've always been the same individual, always, mm. because I'm, 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 I've never been, I've never been that dude who don't want nobody else to get nowhere. I always, I always, if I got something, I like to see other people get something too. I, and I don't think I'm better than them because I got something. Yeah. I've always, I've, I've literally always been humble down to earth, always. You know what I mean? And um, and that my family on both sides carry that. Mm. I mean, you always, you always have people who get something, think they doing something, but a lot of my family just some, we 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 some humble people that mm. um we don't take things for granted because we know that they can disappear just as fast as they can. Yeah, I love that it came from your family. And oftentimes I explore family dynamics and it has changed so much over the years. But do mm -hmm. you find that humility and being humble is a common ingredient throughout the music industry? Because it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. No, matter. no. I, um, humility and being humble isn't a common ingredient because, see, thing is, if you take the little kid who didn't have school popularity and he always wanted to. You take him and put him in the entertainment business and all of a sudden he's the number one artist and everything. He's probably going to act different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, um, in this business, a lot of people, a lot of people can tend to act that way. And it got, it has a lot to do with trauma, childhood mm -hmm. trauma and things that we go through when we're young and coming up, who you're around, what, what, what they, what they downloading in you, what you uploading that came from them. It has, it, it has a lot of things to do with a lot of things growing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think this whole new digital space is kind of adding to the trauma. Have you, oh, yeah. have you joined the, that new Instagram thread? Have you joined it yet? I just heard, it's funny you asking about that. I just heard about it today. <laughs> Me too. I just heard about it today. What is it? What is it? It's supposed to be like Twitter, but with less restrictions. But the thing about it, if you create a threat account and you try to delete it, it'll also delete your Instagram account. See, they, they, I can't, I mean, I already got Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all this okay. stuff. I, I can't, I can't keep adding on. I can barely keep up with the ones I got. <laughs> you know what I I'm know. saying? It's such a distraction. I'm like, okay, let me just go on Instagram and just look at my feed for five minutes. Yeah. I know it's an hour. It's too many distractions. And, and, and it's the same, it's the same companies making all of these other apps and other companies. And it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It is. It is. But going back to your humble beginnings, what I was really impressed by to know that you went on tour with Nelly even before you were signed as an artist. Is that true? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. So how, <laughs> I was going to say yes, ma'am. I, 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 how did that happen? Because Nelly, huge, huge artist. You're unsigned, but you're touring with him? Talk about so, that. Yes. Okay, so how that happened was now keep in mind everybody that's around Nelly and it's all it's friends and family around. I know them. I you know, I know the inner circle, everything. So I had at the time was in a group called Three Strikes. Mm -hmm. It consisted of me, uh, a friend of mine named One Kai, and and my homeboy I've grown up with since I was like six years old, a mob. Ahmad is the younger brother of Ali from St. Lunatics. Uh -huh. And so um, we we had good music. We, we was we were solo artists, but we made a couple songs together and decided to try to group thing because we made some hot music together. Mm -hmm. And so it eventually, uh, I think 
T Love, who was managing Nelly at the time, and Ali, they heard it and um, they liked the music. And I know when at the time they was doing these spot dates, and on spot dates sometimes you can need an open an act or somebody to fill the time. And and they wanted they 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 want they T Love them wanted us to do it. And so that's how we got on those shows opening up and, and did our thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just good music and hard work. Yeah, but you were ready. So this yeah, is what I, I tell people. I've been doing this for a long time. Exactly. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So you knew the right people. The mu music was already yeah. ready and it was good music. And they it was like a no brainer for them to add you to the tour. Yeah. You were young touring with Nelly. So as a grown man now, when you think about the touring experience back then with Nelly, what lessons did you miss then, but you understand now as a man? Um, now, keep in mind, too, this was, I've been doing music in St. Louis before them. Like, so on the, on the underground circuit okay. of St. Louis, like putting out local music and all of that, I've been doing this. I've, I've been doing this. Like, now, now, the St. Louis Six and Nelly and them happened to get on first. Okay. True indeed, but I had I, I had been doing this. They know they know me. We all know each other. Everybody knows each other. You know what I mean. Got it. Got it. And so, um, you say what some things I I learned? Yeah. What What are some of the things that you now know as a man that you didn't know back then as a kid touring? Oh, as a as a kid touring, um, keep the entourage really low. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, keep the entourage low, so the overhead won't be so high. <laughs> that's definitely something I, I figured out because when you when you when you you know when you had when you get on peak of your career had a success you have everybody around and you want everybody to enjoy it but everybody ends up becoming to be a mm, so true we hear so many stories of the entourage starting all of the trouble yeah accruing all of these bills and it's not even the artist. The artist sometimes doesn't even know what their friends yeah. and entourage is doing. So that was a teachable moment. That was a good lesson. Yeah, for real. The audience. But then, okay, so you started touring with Nelly. You were unsigned and then you signed to Ludacris's um, label, Disturbing. Yeah. Talk about that. How did that happen? That, yeah, go ahead. How, how did that happen? Because at the same time, I'm still, I'm still a, I'm still an artist and still trying to make it. And I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for them to be, to put me on or, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it wasn't, it wasn't really about that. Um, so I'm still sending music to record labels, still, you know, doing my thing. So I hooked up with the track stars who, who produced that first album, Jackpot. Mm -hmm. We put together like a four to six song EP. And right there happened to be on the EP, but it was just a verse and the hook. Mm -hmm. on that beat and you know i wrote that hook and verse when i was 16 and this we talking about 22 when yeah. when when it was heard and i had to finish it mm -hmm. and so around october 20, 2002 we sent the uh a couple cds off with the demo records on there and chaka zulu who's ludicrous manager and co-owner disturbing the peace mm -hmm. he hit back and he was like tell chingy to um finish a couple of those records, but finish that right there. Mm. Record. Mm -hmm. So we finished that, we finished that, got it on vinyl, shipped it out to some DJs. This was like in October. I had mm -hmm. my deal with Capitol Records December 14th. Next year, next year, 2003, right there was number one in the country. Wow. That's how, that's how that happened. Wow. But you know, yeah. I don't, don't want to just leave that there because even though the timeline between you touring and you getting signed seemed a little bit short, once again, you were putting in the work before. Yeah, you yeah, I've been, I've been, I put out local CDs. I've traveled outside the country, uh, opened up for Outkast and uh, so many people. So I, this ain't, this is nothing new to me. I've been on this St. Louis circuit since a kid. Like, and when I say since a kid, like. Like one of the first, like it was, a, it was only a few that was doing it, and I was one of them. Like in the in the in the late eighties, mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying, like for real. Got it. You know the hard work, the persistence, the dedication. Those ingredients seem to have changed over time for these yeah. new artists. You don't find social it, media. Uh, yes, you don't. Find you can just make a song and throw it out. Yeah, how, but how do you feel about that? Them just putting a song on social media and getting a whole bunch of views and streams and all of a sudden someone wants to sign them. How do you feel about that? 
It's a business, and and that those those record companies are in the business of making money. So if if, if there's some people that 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 like it, love it, think it's great, they just want to make a couple of dollars. You know what I mean? And um, today you can with the press of a button, you can just get your music out to lots of people. Yeah. When I was when I was coming up, we had to go outside the city. We had to go travel, go out of town, beat down doors. We had to post up posters. We had to track people down. Mm-hmm. It was very, um, it was a little more, a little more tedious. Yeah. Then, then you have social media now. You just throw someone up, press a button, and all these people can hear it. Yes. And so it was very different. Very different. Very different. Um, I was talking to Mr. Dalvin from Jodeci, and we were just talking about his journey and how. His brother traveled all the way to um, Paisley Park and Mm -hmm. Prince told him no. Then they traveled to New York without their parents' permission and they were told no again. But the hard work and the persistence paid off because they had so much music that they had written previously. And years later, they get the record deal and able to produce the music that they wrote years ago. And speaking, and and, and I want to touch on that because you mentioned um, Devontae going and getting and, and Prince telling them no and then another regular telling them no. So I remember um Kevin Lyles turned me down at Def Jam. Mm. He turned he turned it down. And so um he would always apologize to me when I see him because it went on to steal millions of records. Because some wow. people some people are so used to this East Coast sound or this West Coast sound and you know, they think that's all it is. Yeah. And they they don't like the they don't they don't tend to like to give um, newer things a try. Yeah, and I and know. not not necessarily that is new, but it's different. different. They don't like to give different things a try that's not from their region. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, I know I'm guilty of it. I'm from New York. I remember when you know Nelly and you, uh, the Lunatics, broke the scene, and us as New Yorkers, we were like, "What is this? This sound is so different." But but New York like, loved me though. Like yeah. they love Nelly. Yeah. They love St. Louis. Yeah. Like for real. Like, we it for a hot second. But yeah. good music or great music is so undeniable that we just said, you know what, this is just good music. So, you know, mm-hmm. when we go in the clubs, we definitely have to put this on the rotation. So, you know, once again, it didn't matter where you were from as long as you gave us great music. So thank you for giving us that. What happened to your picture? I don't see. Uh, it. No, some somebody tried to call me, and I think oh. they messed. They messed. <laughs> they, they messed some stuff up. I'm trying to fix it. Hold on. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So you also mentioned some producers. Well, you uh, what was it? Track masters. You said you were track, you were, track you were, stars. Track stars. But yeah. you also had some other amazing producers. Um, Scott Storch. Scott Storch. Uh, uh, yeah, I worked with him. Timberland. Jermaine Dupree. Timberland. Timberland. Who was your favorite producer to work with? Who was my favorite producer to work with? See me when it comes to when it comes to favorites and things like that. It's it's so many people I enjoy working with, mm. and for for me to for me to say one is is the overall best. It's hard for me to say that because I loved working with Tim. We made great records. Mm-hmm. I loved working with Scott Storch. I loved working with um, um, DJ Quick. Mm-hmm. I loved working with Jermaine Dupri, but the thing is, me and Jermaine Dupri got a number one record. We're pulling me back, yeah. and that was a dream come true because I always—I used to go to Atlanta looking for Jermaine Dupri. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, like 13, for real, I used to go there looking for him, and um, to get a number one record with him—that was a dream come true. Wow. Yeah, artists don't do that anymore. I remember when I had dreams of breaking into the music industry. Child, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but I remember going and looking at like magazines and finding addresses or the back of album covers, CD covers. They had the addresses mm-hmm. and people yeah. listed. There. You don't find that like people just aren't doing the work. So if you saw an influencer on social media who had a lot of views and um, according to the views, they said the music was good. Would you collaborate with that artist or no? Um, I mean, I got to like it. I got to I gotta, I gotta like the music. I got to enjoy the music. I got to appreciate the music. But I'm not biased to working with anybody. Like, I don't mind working with new artists, you know, um, established artists. It's just, if it's some cool music, I'm, it's, what, it's cool with me. Got it, got it. But I want to backtrack a little bit because I did forget to ask you a question. 
when you signed to Ludacris's Disturbing the Peace uh, record label, it did cause a little bit of tension between you and Nelly. Have you two resolved that? Because it's been a long um, time. Um, for us, that tension, I don't know what that was about. Because I wasn't signed to Nelly. I had, we, that was, you know, it was nothing there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that, that just had to be some ego stuff some people mm-hmm. was, was, was really on. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was it was never a thing. I think it was it was made a thing by certain people who I guess want us to just take credit for for what was coming out of St. Louis. Mm. So if you two see each other, see I just seen them. We, we 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 got we got plenty of shows together. Nice. I be mean, I just was kicking it with them. Like it's nice. yeah, that's just, all of that stuff is dead. Good. But that's yeah. why I wanted to clear that up because, you know, the media, some media outlets, they create this rap beef for years. Yeah, yeah. And we've seen what it can ha- what can happen as a result of false truths. So I just wanted yeah. to clear up for my audience. There's no beef. You know, these are no, no, no. successful artists. No beef. We grown men. Happen. We grown men. We don't. That stuff is dead. We don't got time for that. We don't got no time for that. Got it. So you've collaborated with a lot of other artists. Um, one of my favorite songs is um, Like Me. Fly Like Me with mm-hmm. A. Marie. Fly Like Me A. Marie, yep. What's your favorite Chingy song? Uh, once again, <laughs> it's hard. It's really? very, no, it's very hard for me to pick one when it's so many I like and that's, mm-hmm. that's favorites. When it's so many that I enjoy. Got but it. if I had, if I had to, yeah. I guess we, we have to put right there at the top of the pile because that song has just been the most powerful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of, lot of lovely records, but that song has just been the most powerful. At the yeah. Time. Even I've seen recently other rappers have taken the music to write there and rapped over the instrumental. Yeah. Once again, just multi generational. Multi generational. It transcends time. So I, I know that was a difficult question because that's like asking a parent, like, who's your favorite child? Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Like I've I've seen parents show favoritism. So yeah, it exists. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. So then, after all of this amazing music, there was a point in time where we didn't see you. We didn't hear any music. When you stepped away from the music industry, was it because of declining record sales was it because of behind the scenes bureaucracy or did you make a choice to say let me take a step back and regroup and refocus um when i when i wasn't on the scene as much actually i've always been there it's just when you're not with the record label you don't get the attention you don't you don't get the outlets you don't get the you don't get to play on the radio all the time you don't get the tv visions you don't get the the being talked about as much on all of the um, outlets, mm-hmm. and so that's when it that's when it becomes just like, oh damn, what happened? Oh, is this artist locked up, or uh, they dead, or they did say that? No, it's just that when you don't got the major record deal, things things are not really working out in your favor as they should. And this is around a time where social media was just really really blooming. Mm. When I, I'm talking about back in you know 2006, 2007, 2000, we're not we're losing. And then a lot of personal stuff going on and, and different things, but um, I've always been, I've always been around. It's just when they didn't have a record deal, things you know things weren't weren't as big as they was once. So when did you lose your record deal? So after disturbing the peace, did you go to another label or were you dropped from DD? Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't dropped from disturbing the peace. I actually in, in Def Jam, I actually wanted to leave. Wow. And I think I think um I think Ludacris before I think they tried to say I was dropped something, but that was false. That okay. was false. I wanted to leave and, and that's how I left. Uh it was just a lot of things really wasn't going right. Um they a lot of new artists and a lot of just the focus I don't know what the focus became. Mm. You know what I mean? And it just it just wasn't feeling it just wasn't feeling proper at the time and I was kinda getting I was kind of getting just with the with the music business. I was just kind of getting like I didn't want to be a part. Of it. Yeah. And I want I wanted to separate myself. It was it was just getting to be just too much ignorant ignorant stuff going on. Got it. Got and, it. And you know. 
So you mentioned some nuances of being signed to a record label, and you have some artists saying that they prefer to be independent. Have you had an opportunity to explore the independent side? I'm independent now. So which side do you prefer? Well, it, 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 which side do you prefer? It depends on where you at in your career with with how you feel about your position. Now, now me, I've had major success, still have success. I like being independent because I'm, I'm in control. You know what I mean? I get to do pretty much what I want to dictate, how I want to dictate. Now, if I'm a new artist, I might want to get with the major labels because I'm trying to get to a certain plateau. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I've, 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 I've pushed through that plateau and above it, and I'm still here. And so, me, I can... I don't mind being independent. Let's say a record deal come and, you know, it's a, that's all fine. That's all fine, but I'm content where I'm at with being independent. And my genius project I just put out is doing great. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just, I'm allowing, I'm allowing existence to flow, to ebb and flow. And I'm not going, I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to handle my business and, and do what I got to do to get where I need to go. I, it doesn't have to be over the top. Right. Just as long as I'm enjoying myself. I like that. I like that because I'm always telling people and reminding people to, to live in the moment because, you know, you just can't dictate what's going to happen five days, ten days from now. So I'm glad that you also reiterated that teachable moment. Just yeah. about living in the moment, which is so, so important. But you did mention that you have a new new music. It's called Change. Talk about that's, that's that. the EP. So, yeah. yes, I just released, I released it June um, 16th, and that was Tupac's birthday, so it's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Genius, my truth, my terminology, my way of life, me doing what I want to do. That's the whole Genius, just a different play on English. And so, you know, people tend to hear me with the buzz and the her and the high talk. So, it's Genius. Um, the first thing I released called was called Can't Blame Me, which dealt with. Um, there's a lot of false truths in this industry. People lying on you to get fame and, and things like that. Um, then I released That Good, which is, uh, if you like pulling me back one call away, it's a sexy record for the ladies. You know what I mean? Sexual, intimate content. Um, after that, I released Rewind Time. If you ever lost somebody and wish you could rewind time and see them again and kick it with them, one of them type records. Then when I released a project, I dropped a song called Ballin'. But not balling in the aspect of material financial gain, but spiritual currency. Mm. And so I, t I took I took people through a little childhood stuff that I went through and a journey to um, get to where I became this wise, grown man and, and um, developed, got to know myself on the inside and what and what um, my journey looked like with you know becoming a spiritual thinker. Okay. And um, so balling is a great record. Yeah, you tapped into your spirituality just a little bit, and I just want to capture that a little bit because along your journey, you also became what is what is it? A black Hebrew Israelite? No, no, no. I, I, yeah, no, I didn't become a black. <laughs> I guess I guess people thought that because I was getting familiar with uh, with that um, ideology. Okay. I, I had got I, I got familiar with a lot of ideologies that applied to knowing stuff. Okay. And um, I was exploring. I was exploring. I was exploring the journey, trying to learn. And so it, it, it meant reading the Bible. It meant reading the Zohar. It meant reading the Quran. It yeah. meant reading the Torah, reading the Kabbalah. I studied the metaphysics of religion, the metaphysics of thought. I, I, I studied some of everything. Yeah. So I didn't just stop at one place. And what I came to find out is all of these ideologies talk about the same thing. Yeah. They just use different characters and different names. Exactly. We kind of have similar journeys. Um, I tap into various religions and just see how they're all connected. Like for a few years, I studied Buddhism. Mm -hmm. um, for a few years, I said, let me study Islam, Christianity. I just wanted to know what was out there yeah. and how they all connected. But in your spiritual journey, is that the reason why you, or, or in your spiritual journey, did that kind of change the way that you wrote your lyrics and created music? Um, did, it, did the spiritual journey change the way I wrote my lyrics and created music? It had an effect on the way I um, wrote my lyrics and created music. Because when you go listen to Ballin, you get a chance to listen to Ballin and see 
some of the things I'm saying in there, you'll 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 get you'll get the spiritual journey because I go I bring you into my world as far as what I've been through and a little bit of my childhood and what led me to the spiritual journey. Got it. Got and, it. But I, I've always been a mystical kid. I've always been a spiritual mystical kid who wanted to know the origins and origins of creation. I was always mystical and into the super superstitious, superstitious living of the you know the unknown. Got I've it. always been. I've always been that. Got it. So how's Chinglish doing? Chinglish is doing great. Streaming really good. Uh, Spotify knows almost up to a million streams. Um, and all other outlets is doing really, really great. And so, um, me, I'm, I'm proud about what I can get out of what I'm doing. I don't, I ain't, I ain't the one that's got to, it ain't got to be straight to the top. It ain't all that. I'm just pleased that I'm, I'm still here doing what I love to do, still being successful, opportunity still knocking, still coming. I'm enjoying myself. I love it. And it's great. I get to travel places. People probably, it's, it's people I know that just, they don't leave St. Louis. Yeah. I get, to, I get to travel all over the world. And I've done it three to four times. Like, so, I'm just content with, I'm just dropping the music. I got my own label imprint, 369 Creative Mind. 369 being frequency, vibration, energy, because that's what makes up existence. Mm-hmm. And creative mind, you know, just a creative mental. You know, you got to, it starts with an ideal. You got to project it out, take action, and then for it to materialize. So that's what 369 Creative Mind is all about. And I'm just I'm just blessed to be doing what I still love to do right now. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I can't complain. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it can be different. It can be very different. It could be, and you know, you're also paying it for it because with your record label, you also have artists signed to your label. Um, not right now. <laughs> 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 not right now. <laughs> Are you looking for artists to sign? Um, I, 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 I'm getting everything in order for myself. Okay. And when and when and when I'm when I'm able to do that, that's something I'll touch on. Um, then that's something I'll you know look forward to then. But right now, I'm just getting everything with me in order okay. um, for for us, my 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 career, what I want to do, and the goals I want to step up go. And when I get to that aspect, I'm gonna get to that too. But but, but definitely, I'm a I'm gonna end up doing that. I like that because what you just framed and said. A lot of artists don't say that. When they're coming out with new music, they become so fearful to say, you know, I came out years ago. Is there a space for me in this current space of music? Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that you didn't worry about those other outside no. that you could not control. The only yeah. thing that you can control is self. That's the only thing you can control. And you know what? I only try to change things I can't control. I mean, you know, and the things that I can't, I just accept and let that be. Got it. Got it. So you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Will you be going on tour soon? Actually, uh, I'm always doing a lot of spot dates and a lot of things, and so I'm always performing. Mm-hmm. In in August, I'm going on a military tour, Korea, Japan, and Guam. So okay. that's going to that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm sure, you know, our mm-hmm. well, men and ladies in service would love to hear your um, multi-generational time transcending music. I didn't yeah. know that you were a part of... Um, Usher's friends and lovers. Um, the lover, lovers and friends uh, in May. Yeah, yeah. I was part of it. Yeah, yeah. Maya and no, that was a different tour. You also headlined a tour with no, Maya and Junior. Maya. That, that, um, no, Maya was on this tour. It was me and overseas in Australia, and New Zealand in January. It was Nelly, Jaru, me, Maya, Exhibit, Pretty Ricky, Bow Wow, and am I get? Am I forgetting somebody? That's huge. I, I ain't sure, but it was a it was a, it was a nice lineup. That's huge. But see, I, I wanted to mention these things because, like I mentioned earlier, people thought that you had disappeared from the scene. And yeah. That's what happens a lot of times when you're not signed to a record label. You don't have them pushing anything. You're responsible for doing it all on your mm-hmm. own as an exactly. independent. Exactly. But I want to ask you a question just related to something um, current going on. So you are a part of Usher's, what is it, Friends and Lovers or Lovers and Friends? Lovers, lovers and Friends. Lovers yeah. and Friends. Yeah. So how do you feel about him singing on Kiki Palmer and her uh, boyfriend going on social media having a problem with it? Would you, okay, do you know about this? What happened with Kiki Okay, now what, 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 what's going on? 
So at Usher's concert the other day, mm-hmm. Kiki Palmer was in the audience and Usher serenaded her. And yeah. her boyfriend got on Instagram saying, why do you have on that outfit? You're someone's mother now. So now Instagram, wow. yeah, Instagram is in a, a big uproar. Are you married or do you have a girlfriend right um, now? No, I'm not married or have a girlfriend, but I will say this. Yeah, I want your thoughts on it. Well, who? I, I don't, you know, she's a grown woman. Yeah. She's a grown woman. And I'm pretty sure before she walked out the house, she knew what she had on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think I saw a clip of, of her seeking dress. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was secret, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. Just so look, part, yeah. The butt part was out a little bit. It was see through or was out? It was see through. The bottom part, it was see through. But she had on a leotard. Nothing was really. So, out. so, so, what's the difference with if Buster want to take his shirt off on stage and her wearing it? Nothing. The only concern that I have about this entire Kiki Palmer fiasco is. Everything isn't meant for social media. Like, whatever's yeah. going on in your household, keep it in yeah. your household. We have to be posting things on social media. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. It's, it's, become, it's become the new therapy for some reason. Like, it's just, it's, like, I, I'm not into all that. Me either. I've, I've never been. But, um, I don't know. Like, if that, I guess Usher just needed to say something to her. And I guess they may have a relationship to where he can say something to her like that. But you know, uh, she's a wrong one. She do what she wanted to do. Yeah. No, Usher didn't say anything to her. It was her boyfriend who got on social media. Oh, her, oh, her boyfriend, yeah. He, he could have just said that in private. Okay, he could have waited until she came home. <laughs> yeah, he could have he could have just let her know that in private. You know, it don't it don't have to be all over social media, especially if that's your woman. Like you don't have to go take it to the public to say, Oh, that person do that. just right. save it for when she comes. Just let her know. Exactly. So back to Chinglish. Where can my audience stream your music? Um, where can the audience stream the music? Of course, you can go to Apple Music. You can go to Spotify. All of the music social platforms, Amazon, all of the platforms that's social, the music platforms. You can go stream that. Um, follow me on my social media: XG, um, Instagram, Ch- Howard Chingy Baby, Facebook. At Chingy TikTok, Chingy Food Deck, YouTube. Um, also, I got a cologne called Catch the Men. It's smell really good. You can go to Cologne by Chingy and check it out. And uh, yeah, stream that music. Go, go stream the uh, Chingy's right now. It's a great album. I get people telling me when I when I go places all the time. They come up to me, tell me the songs they love and how they love the project. And it's 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 great. And so um, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to really lean in. Like, I, I listened to a little bit of it, but I didn't do my normal process of turning off the lights, no TV, just the music. Just the music. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let it absorb. Yes, that's what I'm going to do with Chinglish. Um, Chingy, thank you so much for yeah. blessing. I was, was going to say yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for blessing my podcast. You stay positive. And spiritually connected, it is evident because it is showing. You look good, Chingy. I, I'm Thank, I appreciate that. You Thank good. you. I try to keep myself together, eat healthy, exercise, and you know, I just try to stay together. Yeah, you got the good black Chingy, so we appreciate you. you and we applaud you. You take care, okay? I appreciate you. Anytime, just let me know when you want me to come on. Oh, thank you so much. Bye bye. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so there you have it. That was an amazing conversation with. Rapper Chingy, I'm full. You know when you, I, I can just push away like a fat girl from the table. I'm full. I've, I've, I've mother ate. Mother is full. Mother has eaten. <laughs> Great conversation. Teachable moments. Teachable moments. Unpacking his pivotal moments and milestones. Such a positive energy, such a high sense of self awareness, and it shows. Let me tell you, I'm look at a person's skin, child. Look at a person's skin, and you could just see the toxicity and the trauma, and the crevices and the nooks and crannies. <laughs> but he looks good, doesn't he? He has maintained himself very, very well in such a treacherous industry called the music industry 
the music industry, I've seen people go in at the age of 23 with a record deal, get dropped at the age of 25, and look like they're 85. We've all seen it. We have all seen it. So it is so refreshing to know that he hasn't gone anywhere. He just doesn't have that big engine that he once had pushing the music. This is why it is so, so important for independent artists, independent con content creators like me. This is why it is so important that you continue to, if you haven't started, that you follow them on social media, even though it is a beast and it is distracting. This is the, the digital space that we live in. So we just have to deal with the, the tools and the resources and the mechanics that we have. Unfortunately, social media is it. So you have to follow these people on social media. You have to reply to their post you have to like it you have to share it you have to stream their music you have to stream this show you have to like you have to reply you have to share it. you have to repost it this is the tool this is the fuel that keeps these engines going a lot of you don't understand a lot of you will keep sh like i look at some a lot a lot of people that i know i don't even call them friends anymore a lot of people that i know and they are constantly sharing content from these major institutions they don't need your help they don't need your help it is independent business owners that needs that needs your support so all of the, the work all of the time dedication that you are all giving to these major 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 businesses use that same energy and that same mindset to support an emerging or established artist or an emerging or established content creator. It is super, 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 super important. Which brings me to the right. Did you, did you subscribe? Did you go through this entire conversation just mesmerized by Chingy and his youthfulness and not subscribe? Subscribe now. Let me wait. I don't have a have on a watch. <laughs> but I know how to count though. Let me count. 60, 59, 58, 57. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Okay, that's all I need you to do. Also, make sure that you look in the description section of this episode and purchase your Sonya on Air merchandise. You can also purchase a Sonya on Air um, t shirt, like the one that I'm wearing here. Let everyone know that you support Sonya on Air. I guarantee if you wear this t shirt, they're going to say, well, What in, the, in a who is a Sonya on Air? And then you can say, it is the number one celebrity podcast for celebrity interviews where she unpacks celebrity pivotal moments and their milestones. And she's had some amazing guests like Chingy, like Mr. Dalvin of Jodeci, like Dawn Robinson of In Vogue, like just about every celebrity on television, film, music, beauty, you name it. They've been on Sonya on air. Okay, so make sure that you rock your Sonya on Air merch, get some other Sonya on Air merch, and so we can be family, you know, so we can be like uh, 53rd Cousins twice removed when I see you down the street wearing your Sonya on Air shirt. And I'm like, hey, cousin. Hey, cousin. I don't know you, but I'm going to know you now. Okay. <laughs> so get your Sonya on Air merch. Also, like I said, if you are interested in securing a digital billboard, I just secured two new spaces in Times Square, New York City. We also have digital billboards across the United States. So contact me, child. You can email Sonia at sonyaonair.net. This information is also in the description section. Um, what else do I have for you? Make sure that you put it on your calendar for next year, the annual beer, bourbon, and barbecue festival here in Brooklyn, New York. I'll see you there because I'm always um, doing media for the people that be in them. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the clip that um, I put into this episode. So yes, I definitely enjoyed Chingy dream come true. Cause like I said, I was, you can't write better. Love, 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 love that to this day, that song fly like me, Amory, two of my favorite songs of all times. That is, Oh, excuse me. <laughs> 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 I 
it happens. <laughs> that is a recipe for a successful artist. Like I mentioned to Chingy in the beginning, when you can say, name a, one of your favorite songs from the early 2000s. And I would say maybe five times out of 10, a Chingy song will definitely be named. This is so that's all I have. That's all I have. I know it's time, but I need to sip me some water. Are and I talk too much. So I'm just going to close out this episode. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure that you leave a comment. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you share, repost on your social media platforms. And stay tuned for another amazing edition of Sonya On Airs. Love you dolls. Smooches. Mwah. <laughs>